My project was funded. Congratulations. I'm required, however, to submit a data management plan. How do I get started? More and more funders require researchers to develop data management plans, abbreviated DMPs. These plans should stimulate the researcher to consider, from the beginning of a project, all relevant aspects of data management. As a data steward, I can help you choose the best services, tools and pipelines to manage your data to promote best practices in data management. Good to hear. The funder also mentions the FAIR principles to implement in my research data. Could you give me more details? FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. Applying these principles to your research data would greatly ease reusing and repurposing of data, either by you or others, and enable automation of processes. These FAIR elements are addressed by data life cycle best practices that I am going to review now. Data planning consists in preparing a data management plan that will help you define your project's data management strategy, plan resources and budget, and anticipate potential issues such as ethical and legal aspects. Do I have to define the responsibilities and data management roles within this project? Yes. It is important that each project member is aware of their responsibilities and roles in data management. We'll work with human data. Would it need special treatment? Indeed, you should be careful with data that needs to be protected against unauthorized access. It is critical to consider these aspects at this early stage. Data collection is the process where information is gathered. Important aspects to consider include data type, volume and documentation, as well as implementing data quality protocols. Do you plan to use existing data? Indeed, part of our data will be sourced from a public repository. Excellent. Reusing existing data, besides saving unnecessary data generation, also makes research more robust by aggregating results obtained from different methods or samples. What kind of data types and volume do you expect to be generated within this project? I'll work with microscopy images and transcriptomics data, but I can only approximate data volume. At this stage, an overall estimation of raw and analysed data is enough to have an idea of the type and cost of data storage and preservation. Data documentation, like readme files and metadata, is necessary for secondary users to understand and reuse your data. OK, I need help with that aspect. But what's needed for a harmonised and persistent documentation? Consider using recording tools, such as electronic lab notebooks, to help you track the metadata. They create a common work environment and limit the risk of information loss. What about file organisation? I never seem to find my documents. Have a look at my screen. It's messy. If you don't find your own files, it is unlikely someone else can. Common and documented rules have to be set up in your group for file naming and organisation. Simple rules include meaningful and consistent file and folder naming, file versioning and the use of readme files to document the file content and organisation. Do you have any tips about how to process data to prepare it for analysis? Think about data normalization, de-identification if required, data and metadata standards, and metadata enrichment. Others will be able to make better use of properly processed data. This makes sense. And most of these considerations are already part of our work processes aimed at research integrity. For example, when analysing data, we always focus on ensuring maximum reproducibility, such as documentation and providing our workflows and code. Excellent. To contribute to FAIR and automated workflows, consider using package and environment management systems, container environments, workflow management systems, electronic notebooks. To mitigate the risks of unauthorised access and data deletion, set up proper infrastructure and processes. For personal data, implementation of these higher safeguards is a legal obligation. Can you identify who should have access to the project data? Sure. Not all team members should have access to the raw data. 
best practice is to provide team members only access to the data they need to answer their research question. What type of storage are you using in the group? Um, well, some data is in the global group folder and some on laptops. Then we have cloud storages and... Managing the data centrally makes life safer and easier for everyone with an efficient backup process and clear access rights. What operational procedures have you put in place for data preservation? Data should be preserved usually at least 10 years to allow for experiment reproducibility and resolve issues where access may be required by the funder or publisher. Yeah, this is where we could use extra help. We just contacted our IT department to request for a secured, long-term data storage solution. Great. Sharing data allows researchers to build upon your work. It enables meta-analyzers, increases visibility, and is a requirement for grant funding. We want to submit our data to a public repository, and we're still uncertain about how to go about it. Considering submission to a domain-specific repository increases visibility, but first you must decide if the level of access to your data is open or restricted. Finally, to apply all these notions and find more information about data repositories and research data management in general, visit the Elixir RDM Kit, an excellent resource developed during the Elixir Converge project. Well, thank you very much for the overview and pointing out the importance of research data management. I'm definitely going to make use of your expertise to improve data management in the next steps in my research project.